Welcome to the recap of today's Creative Commons open source office hours. We've been hanging out on codebuddies.org. Today we've been continuing to work with the WordPress API with the idea of returning some pre-rendered HTML instead of JSON data. The idea is that we have some menus that are defined in WordPress and those menus can be modified by the end users. We would like to incorporate those menus into web properties outside of WordPress so that there's a consistent look and feel. Now we've been relying on downstream JavaScript to take raw JSON menu entries and compile those to JavaScript uh, to HTML in the client. But we'd like to shift more towards server rendered HTML approach to make the downstream integration and in code a little bit more simple and perhaps less brittle. If the, not only if the menu items change, but if the styling uh, changes on our primary WordPress website, we'd like that those changes to get propagated automatically just by rebuilding the downstream project if it's just in the case of a static compiled project or just refreshing the page if it's um, done by a library like HTMX. Yesterday I encountered some difficulties mainly with my understanding of how the WordPress API works. Uh, namely that you, I believe, have to have permalinks enabled in order for the API endpoints to work as expected um, without a prefix, at least. I, I couldn't get it to work with the, the argument. Uh, so I could only get the API endpoints to work when permalinks were enabled. You know, again, this could be um, my mistake. I just opened a small pull request to the WordPress API documentation to clarify that and hopefully save some else someone else a little bit of confusion. It's a one line change. The main work though, uh, it does seem feasible. The idea seems feasible, at least for menu items. Um, there's a function that's used in WordPress templates called WP nav menu that takes an array of arguments. And if you pass in the menu, uh, in this case instance, uh, it'll return the expected HTML. Looks like this, which is what we were hoping for. Now there's a caveat I encountered. Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. Essentially, once we've got a function that gets our menu locations and looks for a specific menu, identified by name here, uh, make sure it's not empty and then prepares the HTML as I mentioned a moment ago, and returns that. We've got that function, now we need to just wire that into our API, initialize the API, register a route. I've added a prefix here, menu. We aren't committed to this um, API structure, but it essentially goes menu, uh, sorry, prefix path. Prefix path. And tell it what type of request it can expect and the callback function. It may be possible to pass arguments to the callback function, which can be useful. As you'll see in a moment, there's some, um, when debug mode is enabled, it actually returns some, I would say unexpected, I didn't expect it at least, um, result. WordPress isn't primarily uh, maybe built to just render fragments of HTML and return those via an API. So I'm kind of stepping a little bit outside of convention here. We're not going to be doing widespread um, pattern, uh, following this pattern a lot. We're not expecting WordPress to be a general purpose content. Um, web development framework, for example, Django or Rails just have that convention where you create a template and you instantiate some context data and you call a function with the template name and the context data and it renders it and you can return that to the client. And Django doesn't really have any strong opinion if it's done by an API or if it's rendering it as a response and in fact has helpers to re render the response. In any case, um, WordPress doesn't 
quite follow that paradigm and we got some debug messages as a result. This is basically I'm using a template function in an API endpoint. I'm not sure. Again, that's not very conventional. But the workaround in debug mode, which probably won't be enabled in our production system, so this is um, might be unnecessary, is to um, essentially capture some the output and flush it. Um, the I guess the internal PHP debugging output, and our code just goes in between, like normal, and will return uh, a clean version of that and. You can see that here I'm, I have debug enabled locally due to the WPN uh, project running, but I don't have the debug messages. And that's because the code over here has these functions in there. But if I take those out, you can see the output, the unexpected output, and it's output buffering, you turn it on run your code, return it as normal, and then flush the output buffer and turn it off. I hope not to have to have these throughout our API code. Uh, maybe there's a decorator pattern, or as I mentioned, we won't be running in production with debug mode enabled. Uh, but while I'm developing, I don't want to just suppress all of the possible uh, debug messages. There could be some important information coming through there. so. You know, if there's a decorator pattern in PHP or something like that, it might be useful. Uh, I'll just have to figure out how to go. This was just a test and a successful one at that. And since we're only concerned right now with menus primarily, uh, I think it'll carry us forward. I'll create a, a couple of derivative tasks here and we can prioritize those amongst the other ongoing work. All right. Well, again, we've been hanging out today on codebuddies.org working on open source for the Creative Commons. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.